hey guys welcome back to the channel and now in this video we will be understanding what are electromagnetic radiations so let's start with the topic so as we all know that the radiant energies like the microwaves radio waves even our visible light and the x-rays they travel in the form of electromagnetic wave now what is this electromagnetic wave this electromagnetic wave is basically made up of two components the first component is your electric component and the second component is your magnetic component now how is this electric component and magnetic component going to contribute to electromagnetic wave they both are going to contribute in the form of a sine wave which means that the sine wave of the electric component is going to combine with the sine wave of magnetic component and the combination of both these sine waves is going to give us a electromagnetic wave so i hope you all know how a sine wave looks like now a question might have arisen to your mind that how will they combine how are the two sine waves going to combine so i have a diagram of electromagnetic wave so this this is how the two sine waves are going to combine can you see a red color sine wave and a blue color sine wave let us assume that this red color sine wave is of electrical component and this blue color sine wave is of magnetic component okay so can you see that this red color sine wave is vibrating in a plane which is in a vertical direction okay this plane is in a vertical direction and this blue color wave is vibrating in a plane which is in a horizontal direction and both these planes are perpendicular to each other now let us understand this with the help of the axis let's consider this to be your y axis this to be your x axis and this to be your z axis so as we can see that the red color wave is vibrating in the y axis and the blue color wave is vibrating in the z axis now as we all know that the y axis is perpendicular to z axis so can i say that the red color wave is also perpendicular to the blue color wave okay and as we can see over here this arrow is pointing towards the direction of the wave as you can see over here that this complete electromagnetic wave is moving in a direction from left to right which is shown by this arrow which is our x axis okay now can i say that this red color wave which is our y axis is perpendicular to x axis as we all know that the y axis is perpendicular to x axis therefore can i say that the red color wave is also perpendicular to the direction of propagation similarly the z axis is perpendicular to x axis so can i say that the blue color wave is perpendicular to the direction of propagation and what is direction of propagation which is nothing but the direction in which the wave is traveling okay so we will understand these points again one by one that is the electric component and magnetic component of the wave are perpendicular to each other as we have seen that this red color wave is perpendicular to the blue color plane blue color wave and this red color wave as well as this blue color wave they are both perpendicular to the direction in which the wave is traveling okay now one observation was made about the electromagnetic waves see this complete is a combination of two sine waves which is nothing but a one electromagnetic wave which is nothing but a formation of electromagnetic wave so it was observed that this complete electromagnetic wave travels at a speed of 
थ्री इंटू टेन रेस टू एट मीटर्स पर सेकेंड एंड दिस स्पीड इज नथिंग बट द स्पीड ऑफ अ विजिबल लाइट सो यू माइट बी रिमेम्बरिंग दैट इन द इनिशियल पार्ट ऑफ द वीडियो आई गेव यू ऑल द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ विजिबल लाइट अलॉन्ग विद द एक्स रेज एंड रेडियो वेव्स माइक्रोवेव्स देर आई मेन्शन द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ विजिबल लाइट ऑल्सो सो हेन्स वी कैन से दैट द विजिबल लाइट ट्रेवल्स इन द फॉर्म ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव ओके मुविंग अहेड different radiations have different frequencies and different wavelength which means that if you consider a radio wave and a visible light so since they both are different therefore radio waves is going to have different frequency and it is also going to have different wavelength and visible light is also going to have different frequency and different wavelength as compared to the radio wave Okay, I hope you are understanding this. Now, what is this frequencies and what is this wavelength? First, initially we will understand what is frequency. So, for understanding frequency, it is essential for us to know what is time period. Time period T is the time taken by one wave to pass through a point, which means that suppose I have a point over here. now since this wave is moving from left to right so a time will come when this wave will reach to this point i have a point over here so this wave is going to reach to this point so when this wave reaches this point the time taken by this complete one wave this one wave a single wave i am talking about i am not talking about the complete electromagnetic wave i am only talking about one complete wave this is a single complete wave which is going up and going down okay so the time taken by this one complete wave to pass through a point is known as the time period so how much time does this one complete wave takes to pass through this point which i have kept over here is known as a time period now i have only mentioned this wave but as this wave is starting over here and ending at this point similarly this blue color wave is also starting at this point and ending at this point so can i say that the time period taken by both of them is going to be same as they both are traveling together and they are having same size okay so i hope you have understood what is time period time period is nothing but the time taken by this one complete wave to pass through a particular point okay now since as we all know that one wave takes t seconds and what is t t is nothing but a time period which is represented by capital t okay capital t are not small t small t is for the complete electromagnetic wave and capital t is only for this single electromagnetic wave of this complete combination okay so one wave takes t seconds which is nothing but see time period which you understood so how many waves will travel in one second that's my question see one wave takes a time of t so in one second how many waves are going to pass through a point i don't know that So therefore i assume this to be f okay since i have assumed it to be x f in order to find out the formula of f i will just cross multiply that is 1 into 1 is equal to f into t so by just simply arranging it in a manner we get f is equals to 1 upon t and this f is nothing but your frequency now how can i define frequency can i define frequency as it gives us the number of waves passing through a point in one second i'm repeating again frequency gives us the number of waves passing through a point in one second okay so let's define frequency frequency tells us how many number of waves will be passing through a point in 1 second 
I hope this is clear for you all. Okay. Now moving ahead, let's understand wavelength. What is wavelength? Wavelength is the distance between two consecutive particles of the medium which are in the same phase. In simple words, wavelength is nothing but the distance from starting point till the ending point of the waves. Or wavelength that is this distance from this point till this point where a complete one wave is completed. Okay. Or you can also define wavelength as two points on a wave which are in the same phase like this point is in phase with this point or this point which is in phase with this point. So if you want to measure wavelength so the distance is from this point till this point or from this point till this point. Okay, so I hope you have understood what is wavelength. Wavelength is nothing but the distance of one complete wave. And this wavelength is denoted by lambda. I hope this phase point is clear for you all. What is same phase? See, this point is above by pi by 2. Similarly, this point is above by pi by 2 with reference to this point. See, this point and this point, they both are above. Okay, and the distance between them is 2 pi. I sorry, phase difference between them is 2 pi. So the distance is one wavelength that is lambda. Or simply remember that it is starting point till the ending point. Okay, and it is denoted by lambda. Okay, now what is the formula of speed? Speed is equal to distance upon time. This is all we know. Now, can I say that the speed of an electromagnetic wave which is represented by C is equal to lambda? Why lambda? I have taken distance to be lambda. Because lambda is the distance covered by one wave which we have done just now. And T which is nothing but the time taken by one wave. Therefore, I have taken T. Since you are taking a distance covered by one wave that is the distance through which one wave is vibrating. Therefore, I will take the time period by one wave. Okay, which is T, capital T. Now, for simply for, the, for, for simplifying it further, as we all know that frequency F is nothing but equals to 1 upon T, which I have done earlier in this video. Substituting this 1 upon T to be F, we get C is equals to lambda into F. And further on, just rearranging it, we can get F is equals to C upon lambda. Now, we are going to understand one more small concept just similar to the frequency okay which is nothing but the wave number okay so as we have seen that one wave occupies a distance of lambda that is the distance from starting point to the ending point of the wave is lambda okay similarly so i want to find out how many waves are present in one meter? If one wave occupies the distance of lambda meters, so I want to know how many waves are present in a distance of one meter. I don't know, so therefore I will assume it to be mu naught. This time I am assuming it to be mu naught. Now simply cross multiplying, what we get, get is that mu naught is equal to 1 on lambda. And this mu naught is nothing but your wave number. So how can you define wave number? Wave number tells us the number of waves present in one meter. I hope this definition as well as this concept is clear for you all. Okay, so moving ahead, again coming back to a formula which is what? F is equal to C upon lambda. Now simplifying further on, as we all know mu naught is equal to 1 upon lambda. Substituting this mu naught is equal to 1 upon lambda in this formula, what we are going to get is f is equal to c upon mu naught. So guys, this was all about your electromagnetic radiations. If you have liked this video, then please do subscribe to the channel and go check out my channel where I uploaded 11th and 12th physics and chemistry videos. They will be helpful for you all. So and don't forget to subscribe to the channel guys and do share it with your friends. Guys, thanks for watching this video.